Okay, and so I just got back from the movies, and I had kind of an interesting shower thought while I was there. Okay, so you know how people will go see a movie together, or at least if they have friends, or like if you're alone at home and you're bored, you might watch a film. And TV stations talk about how many eyeballs they have watching their channel, right? And yet, it's commonly understood in showbiz that while bad video is forgivable, bad audio is unbearable. So in a weird way, what we hear is way more important than what we see. Like, just look at 28 Days Later. Just look at 28 Days Later. They shot everything in this movie on mini DV, which is not a high quality recording format. So the video is pretty crap. And yet, it works. And it's a good movie. And you know why? Because the audio saved it. So what we hear is important. It affects our enjoyment of a thing. But let me hit you with this one. Why do movies have a soundtrack? I mean, if we pull away and we look at it objectively, it's really strange that we have music just continuously playing in the background. I mean, this is not grounded in reality. I don't walk around with songs accompanying everything that I do. Except on YouTube. But in movies, we crave that soundtrack. We need it. And we almost always get it. Why? Because, simply put, filmmakers are manipulating you. I mean, just listen to the background music right now. It's bright, it's happy, but you change the music and it's... What if that scene had been different? But you change the music and it's... It makes you feel different, doesn't it? And maybe that's not all that surprising. I mean, after all, music is pretty emotional. Some music makes you feel happy or surprised or fearful or like the bad guy or and if we're getting personal, I have a lot of feelings every time I hear I will remember you Will you So it makes sense that emotions are one of the most studied areas in the field of music psychology. There's an ongoing debate about whether or not music-induced emotions are real emotions. And so far, all evidence points to yes. You can't see that. We know that when we listen to music, uh, our facial expressions change, for example. Or we might start to sing or dance. Or from a baseline level, our body responds to music. And we know a decent amount about how this stuff works in the brain, too. So from an anatomy perspective, uh, when music hits our ear, it stimulates spinal motor neurons, the vestibular system, and the autonomic nervous system. So right off the bat, music activates or arouses your body, and it may be part of the reason why you feel the music or want to move to the beat. Then it lights up your brain's emotion centers, which include the amygdala, the nucleus accumbens, and the hippocampus. Now, the amygdala is often referred to as the fear center of the brain, and it is, but it's also pivotal in the formation and storage of all emotional events. And the, nucle the, nu the, nu uh. <laughs> the nucleus accumbens responds to rewarding stimuli, particularly from peak emotional events. So, uh, as an example, when you get the chills when you're listening to music, that would be a peak emotional event. 
And the hippocampus, beyond being closely tied to memory, also partially regulates the chemical stress response of your brain and other brain areas like the hypothalamus, uh, the pituitary glands, and the adrenal glands. So positive and happy music actually reduces the release of stress hormones like cortisol, and sad or scary music increases them. And people self-report a change in how they feel when they listen to different kinds of music. So regardless of whether it's a learned response or maybe something biological, we know that music evokes emotion. So why use it in film? So like I was saying before, there's no real life reason to have music play in a movie. I guess unless it's you know coming through a speaker or if a musician is playing it. And yet it would be weird to not have music. In fact, that's why cinematic music was created in the first place. Back in the era of silent films, there was no sound and people going to these movies felt kind of awkward, you know? They didn't want to sit quietly next to this person that's like right next to them and worry about how loudly they were breathing. So theaters brought in piano players and other musicians in order to accompany what was going on on screen. And voila, the marriage of music and film was institutionalized. And even after these newfangled talkies came in, it was just too late. You know, cinematic music had burrowed its way in and had become a staple of filmmaking. And today, that continues to be true. It's almost hard to imagine it without it, but you know, of course, YouTube finds a way. Without music, you can turn a triumphant scene like this into, well. Okay, so music and film keeps things from being awkward, but it does so much more than that. It can tell you where you are. It provides continuity between scenes. More of this fight, Neil. But most importantly, it tells you how to feel. Now, you might admire a certain actor because of their ability to convey complex emotions, or maybe you appreciate a particular director who's able to cut together scenes to tell a cohesive story. But music removes ambiguity, and it takes the emotional level to brand new heights. If you've ever watched a video kind of like this, uh, where it talks about movie music, it probably talked about horror films, because they are the masters of using music to evoke a certain emotion. In their case, you know, it'd be fear, tension, and dread. Who's that? Let me show you what I mean. You all know who Alfred Hitchcock is. He was a master of cinema, and he used editing in order to elevate stories to new heights. But did you know that in the murder shower scene of Psycho, he originally did not want any music accompanying it. This is what it looked like. Bernard Herrmann, the composer for the film, did it anyway, and I think that you'll admit that with the screeching violins, it's a lot scarier and it brings the emotional level to a new height. And as good as actors are at, you know, acting, emotions are actually pretty hard to convey on screen. And there are a lot of scenes in movies with both people or without people that are emotionally ambiguous. So how are you supposed to feel then? Before I go any further, I need to talk about the Kuleshov effect. Now, the Kuleshov effect is a phenomenon where we derive more meaning from two clips cut together, 
even if they're totally meaningless, than one clip in isolation. So let's take a look at three examples right now. Most likely, you created a story out of each of those little examples that I just showed, even though I just grabbed some random stock footage online. So maybe the guy went from being a private investigator to a photojournalist to just some dude creeping on a woman on the street. Now, Kuleshov was a director, and he used the same editing technique to impart emotions onto his characters. He would show an actor with an expressionless face and paired it with another clip. And depending on that second clip, viewers interpreted the actor as either being happy, sad, or hungry even. Now recently, a few different studies tested this effect. One even used fMRI to see if the brain activity of people lined up with positive, negative, or neutral scenes. And even though there's more research that needs to be done around this topic, it seems like the effect is real. Uh, people reported that the actor's emotions matched the emotion of that second clip, and their brain activity seemed to line up with that same emotion that they were seeing. It's pretty interesting, right? If you want a deep dive into the Kuleshov effect, I strongly recommend checking out the video by Dan Olson made over at Folding Ideas. It's a really great video, and it goes into a lot more detail that I can't really go into here. But anyway, I bring up the Kuleshov effect because I theorize that you can evoke the same effect by pairing music with film. In other words, you get more meaning when music is present. So let's do a little experiment. Take a look at this next clip. What emotion was that character feeling? What were they thinking about? How should you feel? Well, let me help you out. Play it again. Ah, now it all makes sense. But wait, think again. Well, how about this? Now, I'm not the first person to think of this. If you've ever done any video editing yourself, you know how much music can change the feel of a scene. And if you search YouTube, I mean, you can just find tons of videos where people swap out music in famous clips. Welcome to Jurassic Park. But now there's actually some research to support an auditory Kuleshov effect as well. In a 2017 study, 30 participants were asked to watch different clips of faces that were intercut with neutral scenes. And these scenes featured either happy music, sad music, or just no music at all. And the researchers found that the music significantly influenced participants' emotional judgments of facial expressions, and found that music can alter their perception of scenes and give meaning to ambiguous situations. So, in other words, Hollywood filmmakers are essentially master manipulators of your emotions. And as a viewer, they're like spoon feeding you all of this invisible information in order to guide you through this curated emotional journey. 
So the next time that you treat yourself to a cinematic experience, try hearing a movie instead of seeing one. Anyway, that's pretty much it. I've been listening to a lot of movie music in prep for this video, and uh, so if you have a favorite soundtrack, let me know down in the comments. For me, personally, I'd probably go with the Amelie soundtrack, just because I feel like it fits the ambiance of the movie just so well. But yeah, let me know down below. I'm really interested. And uh, until next time, I'm Micah. Think about it. And then, think about it again.